This week, we start designing and fabricating the dual caliper setup for our Subaru drift car. Beautiful! So, tool number one, set up, tool table, let's erase the whole table, yes. Okay. Rapid, 50 thousandths above the part. At the end, negative 550. Radius is one inch 540. Yeah, that's right. This is three inch 80. Counterclockwise, so we're climb cutting six passes, about 50 thousandths per pass. That's kind of it's aggressive. But now we'll try it. Rectangular pocket, 470. That kind of shit's really dangerous to try and machine through because the uh, the end mill the end mill could grab it and just rip the whole thing out of there. It would not be good. It needs a little bit of deburring, but yeah, a little bit. Here's the bracket. Not quite done yet. I still have to mill some steps into it so that it actually gets the through holes up to the spot that I want it to. But right now we're gonna take it over to the spindles and we'll test fit the whole pattern to make sure I did my numbers right. So 
if I center this up, just visually, we're not hanging off the rotor. Look at that. Yee dog. So, we're here at the junkyard today. Unfortunately, our dual caliper brackets uh, have some size constraints, uh, particularly with the secondary caliper because the Subaru caliper's uh, piston is so large, um, it's too long, and we're, we're interfering with the lateral arm that comes off the, the suspension. So, we found this off of an O2 Mercedes CLK 320. It's a twin piston caliper that has a really small surface area here. And um, I think this is actually going to work for what we want it to do. And it's short enough, the piston length here is short enough that it won't interfere with the, uh, with the lateral arm. So we're going to try this out. Yeah, because it's. Oh, we're going to have to press these calipers up a little bit. Look at this. We are almost in the perfect spot. They're almost level with that edge there. So basically all I have to do is machine a bar that goes across. Um, machine a bar that goes across here that's got some threaded holes in it. Uh, and then I could probably just account for the step there. And then we've got plenty of clearance out here to clear the rest of the the lateral link arm and we've got plenty of pad contact it's a physically smaller rotor it's actually a twin piston caliper um, but I think this thing will actually apply plenty of pressure to get it to lock up this is gonna work out pretty damn good I don't have to make anything mirrored or anything fancy like that Yeah, I have to machine. I'll have to machine a step in it because uh, I don't have any more room to play with in one direction. So it's got to be pretty much perfectly centered up. But it doesn't look like much. It only looks like it's about a fifty thousand step. So if I machine a step you know, from here out, and then my piece that mates up here is an inch an inch wide um, and then I two threaded holes here and two threaded holes in this location this should work beautifully are these, these aren't threaded right no uh, but you're gonna thread them into the plate that you're gonna make yeah so you just need to find the thread or it doesn't matter because we're using our own bolts so well I'll use that the same bolts that are in there yeah. but it'll be easy this will this will actually make it easy because see how close it is to the the knuckle. We wouldn't be able to install a bolt there, so we'll bolt this to the adapter plate first, and then slide the bar in, and then bolt it to that, and then we got plenty of clearance to mount and unmount our hardware. So a little roundabout way to get this done, but I think it's going to work just fine. Yeah. Once we get it all plumbed up. Hell yeah. Next week, we put the finishing touches on our caliper setup and we begin fabricating our hydraulic handbrake.